I've been tinkering around with Home Assistant dashboards and casting them to my Google devices. So in this video, I want to show you how far I've got with casting dashboards based on my voice, based on uh, motion sensor activity, and based on an entity trigger. So if you'd like to learn more and see what I've been up to, then stick around and watch the video. Thanks for watching. I've got three dashboard automation use cases that I'm gonna go through with you today. I'm not gonna go through creating a dashboard and building a dashboard because you've probably already got those and there's lots of videos on how to do that. So this is about casting an existing dashboard to uh, a Google Home device. So my first use case was in my kitchen using voice. So I wanted to be able to bring up a dashboard on my um, Google Hub Max, one of the biggest screen ones, in the kitchen when I issue a command. So I'll show you how I'm doing that now. Cast kitchen dashboard. And the second use case was based on motion. So in my living room, I've also got one of the larger um, Google Max hubs. And I wanted to have the dashboard on the screen at certain points. I don't want it on there all the time because <clears throat> I want to be able to see the Google Photos on there and I may want to listen to music or Spotify or, or whatever on there. So what I've chosen to do is based on motion, the dashboard for the living room or lounge will be displayed on my hub only if nothing else is playing on that screen and when I stand up and move. So if I'm just sat, sitting around watching TV or listening to music, it's not going to trigger. It's only going to be triggered based on motion. So I'll show you how I'm doing that. And then the last one is around an entity change. So I've got, and you may have seen in my other videos, I've got Home Assistant controlling my electric garage doors. So um, the kids and myself and the rest of the family can control the garage door using a mobile phone. And occasionally it gets left open. So I wanted to have a way to notify me and the rest of the family when it's left open. So what I'm doing is... Um, using the entity change so if the door detector on the garage door is left open for more than 10 minutes then it displays uh, the garage dashboard on my living room display and my kitchen display with an alert message that looks like this hello this is the garage roller door. I just want to let you know that I am open to the world. So when I get that notification, I can then do something about it. The dashboard's there so I can easily click on the button and the garage door will close and I can see the sensors close so that sorts that out and I get a nice warning message as well. And then finally one, one thing that I've been tinkering around with as well is on the kitchen dashboard um, when I call that to, to open up there's a button on there where I can press that when the dinner's ready and it'll send a broadcast message around the house so all the kids and the rest of the family can come running into the kitchen and have their dinner. Um, the reason I've done that is um, just to stop having to do a, a broadcast message myself. I can just click on a button on the screen and it'll go off and broadcast. So I'll show you how I'm doing that as well. And there's a little demonstration of what I'm doing here. Ready. So what I'll do now is I'll take you through all of that and how I've got those working. 
So thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in a minute. So let's have a look at the casting the kitchen dashboard using voice control. So this is the automation that I've created to do that. Um, so I'll just walk you through that and then um, I'll probably go through how to create a new one because I want to create a new one for the living room anyway. So we'll go through that as well. So to start with, um, I'm using a helper as the trigger. So I've, called, I've created a, a helper, which I'll show you in a minute, called Cast Kitchen Dashboard. When that's changed to on, then this automation will run. And then what it will do is it will display the kitchen dashboard. So if we go back here, you can see as part of the options, I can select dashboard, room displays, and kitchen so it's going to display that dashboard and then it's going to turn off the cast so it's going to turn it on which triggers Google Home once it's displayed the dashboard on the kitchen display then it turns that toggle off so the toggle is ready to go next time and then I've got a delay for two minutes so that should give me enough time to do whatever I want to do with the kitchen display, that's the kitchen dashboard that's been displayed. Uh, and then what I do is kill off the application. So originally I was just killing off the media player, but on occasions I've looked at the dashboard, then I've been listening to music, but this automation still been running in the background, so it's killed off whatever's running. So now I've put a check in there, um, which basically looks at the kitchen display media player and checks that the app, <coughs> the app Lovelace is running if it is, and that's true, which it shouldn't be at the moment. It will then kill off the, um, the application so it's ready to go again in the future. So with regard to the, uh, the helper, I've just got a toggle switch helper that I've set up and that's turned off at the moment. If I was to turn that on, then it would be picked up in Home Assistant and, sorry, be picked up in uh, Google Home and trigger the display in the dashboard. So when you create this, you need to go into the settings and Home Assist, uh, Voice Assistant and make sure at least the... Um, this item has been able to filter through to, to Google Home. So I'm using Nabu Casa as well, the Nabu Casa integration, which is key to get this working. Uh, I won't go through how to install and set up that now. There's, there's lots of videos on how to do that. Um, but if you do need help, then give us a shout in the comments and I'll try and help. So we need to make sure that the item filters through basically to... Um, Google Home and then we can make use of it in, in an automation in Google Home. So I'll show you that on my phone just now. So I've switched over to my mobile phone and hopefully you can see my um, Google Home app on the screen. So when you allow Home Assistant using Nabu Casa to um, send those entities through to Google Home, they'll appear under devices. And I'll show you this again later when we set one up um, for fresh. But this should come and appear on the bottom part of the screen linked to you. So it'll be a new entity that will filter through there. And then you can go through the process of adding it to the appropriate room. So in my kitchen, I've added cast kitchen dashboard. So you can see there that the um, the kitchen dashboard entities come through. So what I need to do now is make use of that entity. Um, so what I've done is I've created an automation to cast the dashboard. So basically when I say, I'm gonna come up, when I say cast kitchen dashboard, then it's going to turn on that attribute in 
um, Google Home and then because I've turned it on in Google Home and it's linked to Home Assistant then it'll turn on in Home Assistant as well and I'll be able to um, trigger that automation. So hopefully that all makes sense. I think what we'll do now is we'll go through creating one from scratch so you can just see how it all works. Okay, so let's go through creating a brand new voice controlled automation to display the dashboard. So the existing automation on the left hand side is for me to use voice to di display the kitchen dashboard on a kitchen display and I'm going to create a new automation so I can do the same for my living room. So we'll just follow um, step by step exactly what we've done on the left hand side. So the first thing as we said earlier is the trigger. So I'm going to go in and create a new trigger called something similar to that. Let's create and it's a toggle trigger and I'm going to call it cast living room dashboard. So if we can find a suitable icon, I'll do nicely and create. So I want to go back into that now and go into the settings of it. And I can put it in the living room, for example. And I need to go into voice assistance. So at the moment it's not exposed, so I need to expose it. So the uh, entity will filter through to uh, Google Home and we can start to make use of, that, use of that in an automation in Google Automations later on to complete the automation. Um, so that's that done. We'll update that. Just go back in to make sure it's done it properly. Yeah, all enabled and it's there and at the moment it's off which is fine. So we'll go back into our automation we can add the trigger and we'll go to this is a state this is a state so if we go into here and do state oops state there we go state and we'll go cast living room dashboard and when that turns to on so we've got exactly the same oops let's do that yeah so both the same on uh, no optional conditions and then we'll add command what we want it to do so we'll go into media player, play media on living room display, we'll select the dashboards and I've created, started creating some new dashboards specifically for the size screens that I've got the Google display so you may need to look at that yourself and uh, my existing dashboards that I built for a mobile device don't look very pretty on the Google display. So I've started to redevelop them um, using the new dashboard templates. Um, so what we do in living room. So living room, it's the same. And then we need to turn Uh, off so we need to turn the input boolean to off which is what we're doing here so we call it cast living room dashboard and we're turning that off. And then we're going to add a delay. Two minutes while I do whatever I need to do on the display. 
and then the conditional action. So add um, if I'm going to do is, is it template, 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 there we are, template. I'm just going to copy that, copy that across. And then I should be able to change the media player, which is called living room display. So just a reminder what that is. So it's checking basically to make sure that the Home Assistant Lovelace app is running on that display. If it is, then it's going to turn off. Oops. Turn off. Turn off, choose the device, living room display. Because my two minutes is up and I don't I should have made the changes that I needed to by now. And that should be it. So we'll save that and we'll call it something similar to the old one. Living room save. So that's that side of it. We've got the automation set up. We've got the entity set up. The entity should have filtered through to the Google Home app now. So we'll switch over to the mobile device now and make sure that that's come through. So switched over to the mobile phone device. Um, so I've just opened my Google Home app. So if I go into devices and then scroll down to the bottom, which I am at the bottom. So my new uh, entity has come through. So cast living room dashboard is off at the moment. So if I go on to that and add it to my home. I want to put it in the living room. It should now be in the living room if I go back up to the living room area. Um, and it is the cast, cast living room dashboard. So that's there. So what I need to do now is go into my automation. So if you remember before, we've got the kitchen one already. So uh, the existing one is cast, when I say cast kitchen dashboard, turn on that entity. So I need to do something similar for the living room now. So I'll do add At the starter, when I say cast living room dash board, I can add that as the starter, and then the action is to change the device adjust home devices. So if I scroll down to living room, hopefully we'll see living room, cast living room dashboard. So that one, so I'm to turn it on, add action, save. So. 
So that should work now. Um, we've got the automation on the Google Home device, um, which changes the um, state of the helper to on when I command it to display the display. That will then filter through to Home Assistant, which will trigger the automation by turning the, by detecting that the entity has been changed from off to on and the cat dashboard will be displayed. So let's go and test that now. Cast living room dashboard. So it looks as though that's working nicely. I've now got the dashboard can be displayed whenever I need to ask for it. So let's move on to the next use case. Next use case that I've got then is I want the um, living room dashboard to be cast to the living room Google display when I move. So if I'm sat in the lounge watching TV and I want to change something on the dashboard, then if I get up to walk over to the display, the motion sensor in the living room detects that movement and casts the living room dashboard onto the living room Google Home display. So on the screen in front of me here, um, it's a pretty straightforward automation. So it's using one of my living room motion sensors. <clears throat> so as soon as it detects motion, that's the trigger. It's got a condition to check. So if I'm playing something on the living room display, listening to the radio, Spotify or whatever, but if that um, display is in playing mode, then this automation won't execute because I don't want it to kind of knock off uh, and stop something else from playing. So there's a check there. So if it's not playing, then you can continue. Um, the next thing is I'd, I'd noticed when I first started setting this up that um, when you cast a dashboard to a Google display or Google Hub, <clears throat> it displays like a chime notification before um, the dashboard's loaded on, which is really, really annoying. The only way I can find to work around this is to set the media player volume to zero before the dashboard is cast. If anybody knows a better way of doing that, I'd love to hear it because um, my original thinking was set the volume to zero, cache the dashboard, and then set it back to, I don't know, 40% volume again. But when you set the volume to 40% again, the chime notification goes off, which I don't want. So at the moment, I'm having to remember to set the volume back to um, something else when I, when I want to listen to something. So at the moment, it just turns the volume down as low as possible, displays the dashboard and doesn't reset it. So the first thing it does then is sets the volume to zero then displays the living room display dashboard, which you saw earlier in the automation, or earlier in the uh, video. And then again, a delay for two minutes. <clears throat> so once um, two minutes is up, then the automation will turn off the media player on the display, but only if it detects that the Home Assistant Lovelace app is running. So again, through trial and error, the first time I did this, I wasn't running any, any checks and just after two minutes, I'd kill the app. But then I'd find myself in situations where um, this automation had run and within that two minute window, I'd asked Google to play um, the radio or Spotify, or whatever. And then once this automation got to two minutes, it would kill the um, it would stop the uh, radio from playing whatever. So now there's a check here that <clears throat> if only if the Lovelace Home Assistant dashboard is running, then you can stop the stop the display, and that's it. And that that's that's all it does. So I've got this automation running in my kitchen and also uh, in uh, in the master bedroom as well, which seems to work quite well. So hopefully that was useful. 
So the next use case that I've got then for casting displays is for my garage roller door. Um, so essentially what this is, is if the garage door has been left open for a prolonged period of time, so in the case of my automation, if it's just been left open for 10 minutes, then I'll get a notification on my devices around the house and also a dashboard will be um, cast to my kitchen and my living room display. So the idea is that um, we'll get audible notifications and the, the garage dashboard will be cast in those rooms. So I should be able to walk over to it at that point and use the button on the screen to close the door. So on the screen now is the automation that I'm using to do that. And I've got um, on my electric roller doors, which are automated with Home Assistant, as you would expect, um, I've got an Acara um, door sensor. So when Home Assistant detects that that door sensor is opened for 10 minutes, then this automation will be triggered. Then what the automation will do is while the garage roller door sensor is in an open state, it'll carry on and execute these actions. So on my Amazon Echo devices in my living room and kitchen, I get a message saying, hello, this is the garage roller door. I want to let you know that I'm open to the world. So I'll get an audible notification in both my um, kitchen and lounge to, to let me know that's happened. And I also get a notification sent to my mobile phone saying the garage roller door is open. And my wife gets a notification as well. So lots of notifications going on. So hopefully someone will pick up the fact that it's been, in le been left open. Then the last thing that happens is the garage dashboard is cast to the living room display and also to the kitchen display. And then there's a delay for 10 minutes and then it'll start going through this process again while that condition of the garage door is open. So 10 minutes is just a number I've chosen, so it may, you know, may not be long enough or too long for you, but it's kind of flexible. Um, so the dashboard itself then, if we have a quick look at that. So I've been creating new dashboards based on what I'm doing with the displays because my old dashboards were built with the view that they're going to be displayed on mobile devices so they're quite narrow and long whereas I've got a bit more real estate to use on the um, the Google Hub Maxes and I'll try and show a picture on the screen now just so you can see how this shows up on, on an actual display. <coughs> so as you can see on the screen, if I come back out of that a minute, so this is essentially what the um, dashboard would look like. So I've got the garage doors and I can uh, open and close that with the buttons and I've got lights and power and some details about the temperature and those sorts of things. So the additional thing that I've done on this dashboard is, and if I go into edit mode you'll be able to see it, I've got this card, this notification card. So it's a conditional card. So essentially when the garage roller door is open, set to a um, state of open, then this warning message will be displayed on the screen. So normally I would just see a dashboard like this, but if, it's, if the garage door is open, I get the additional notification card here telling me that the garage door is open. Um, so then the dashboard would be displayed on the living room kitchen kitchen display and I can close the um, close the doors. Um, so that's it, that's, the, that's all I wanted to show you on that one, thank you. So the last thing that I wanted to show you was within my kitchen dashboard and uh, I did demo this at the beginning of the video I've got this button at the bottom which is broadcast dinner is ready um, the reason that I've done this is 
we normally just um, ask Google to broadcast the message when it's dinner time and the kids can come through and have their meal. But because of all the noise in the kitchen, Google can't hear what's going on and you end up having to repeat it 15 times to get the announcement to broadcast. So I've added this button onto the dashboard. Um, so we can just press the button and we'll get a, a message broadcast natively onto the Google devices um, to let them know it's dinner time. So natively is the important piece. So it's actually Google that's doing that broadcast. And the important thing there is it's not interrupt, well, it does interrupt what's playing on those Google speakers that it's broadcasting to, but because it's Google doing the announcement, it then resumes um, what's being played rather than me casting a message out, um, which would interrupt everything and not continue playing. So I wanted to introduce something that would natively get Google to broadcast the message, and that's, that's what I'm doing here. So let's have a look at this dashboard. So on the actual button itself, it's simply a toggle switch, uh, a helper, and we'll look at that in a minute, we've seen them before, but essentially what this button is doing is just changing the state or toggling the state of that helper. So by default, the helper is off, and when I press the button, then uh, let's see if we can do it. If I press the button, then that uh, helper is toggled and we'll get a broadcast message that will go out saying dinner is ready. Okay, so here's the helper, uh, broadcast dinner time, nothing special about that. Um, we just need to make sure again that that helper is exposed in this case to Google Assistant. So Google Assistant can then consume that helper in the in the um, Home Assist in the um, application, the Google Home application. Now the difference here is um, we've got that side set up. So I've got the button in the dashboard and we can toggle that helper. The helper's been um, pushed through to Google so it can be consumed using Nabucasa. The difference is this time, the way that I'm automating it is using the Google Home online web tool. So anybody that's got Google Home will have access to this um, facility. And I haven't used this before, so I was kind of learning as I went along. And essentially, you have to create this um, scripted automation to get this to run. Now, don't be don't be put off by this because it's it's easier than it looks and I'll show you in a minute but essentially what this is doing is detecting using the device that we filtered through so this helper has filtered through from home assistant into google it's looking to see when the state is on and when it's on then it will use a broadcast to all of these different google devices around my home with a message saying dinner is ready. So really, really straightforward. Now, when I first looked at this, and I'll show you this now, is if we add a new script, you just get this interface and you think, well, wow, you know, I'm not a scripter, I'm not a coder. I don't know what to do here. Um, but on this right hand side, you can type in basically what you want to happen and the code will be created for you. So example, if I type in broadcast, dinner is ready and say do that then it actually creates the script for you pretty much anyway and I'll show you what it does so there's the script on the right hand side and what we'll do to make it easier to read is I'll get rid of all this sample text that's in here and we'll just copy that across so essentially it's created the bare bones of the automation for me. So the device is the broadcast timer looking for that to be on and it's done all this on its own. It's going to broadcast a message saying dinner is ready and it's only going to do it to the playroom. So as, as we saw earlier, I want to do this in all of the rooms so I can just go through and add all of the rooms that I want the message to be broadcast to and it's easy as that and then you can just save that 
and it'll work. So just to talk through that then, so we've got the button on the dashboard, click the button, the helper gets toggled to on that because that helper is uh, filtered through into Google Home. Google Home will detect that the helper has been switched to on and use this automation then to broadcast the message saying dinner is ready to all of those things. So I, th I think that, that's fantastic. It, it's so much easier broadcasting that message from a button rather than to shout over the extractor fan that's running in the kitchen or the cooking that's going on. And I just have to press that button and then the message gets displayed and the, the kids come through. Um, and the important thing is as well that it, although it does interrupt the Google displays or hubs while the message is being broadcast, because it's done natively, if they listen to Spotify or the radio or whatever, it then resumes what was playing, which is fantastic as well. So I was really pleased with that. Hopefully that's useful and something you can use. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the video all the way to the end. Um, hopefully it's been useful for you. I've kind of covered various scenarios that I've got in my house for casting dashboards based on me saying something based on motion and based on the entity change for the garage and then that cool little button that broadcast messages so i think in the future i'm going to be converting some of my um, home assistant broadcasts to native google broadcast to to stop that interruption of what's been played on the devices um, hopefully you found the video useful if you've got any feedback for me, please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think, whether you're doing anything different or have any other ideas of um, what I could be doing with my um, smart home automation bits and pieces. Um, if you found it useful, then please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It helps me kind of create more videos and motivates me to do more. But thanks again for watching. Really appreciate your support. Bye for now.